Hello, this is Bad Bob the Astronomer. Uh, I'm starting to film a, uh, uh, a series of short videos showing how I'm going to build a new observatory. Uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, I'm going to use it to house my C8 next star. I'm going to put it into an equatorial boat on a, on a, pe on a tall uh, pier and uh, primarily use it for astrophotography or at least try. It will also serve as a visual instrument that I could use under uh, less favorable conditions than my 20 inch like for uh, on windy nights or nights that are going to cloud over soon or with a prospect of rain is ahead but it's still clear. Uh, this observatory I can close up in about 60 seconds or two minutes or something like that and uh, I uh, thought that uh, I would just show how I built I was going to build this observatory just in case anybody uh, wants to build an observatory they might get some ideas from it about either what to do or not to do depending on whether it works or not. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, um, just take a few minutes and uh, sort of give you an idea what the wood I bought was like and, uh, and uh, how I'm storing it. and. Uh, uh, just give you a general overall idea of the size of the observatory. It's going to be uh, a little over nine feet in diameter, uh, at, and it's going to be shape, shaped like a cylinder standing on end. Uh, and it will the, the circular platform, like it's going to be a double layer of three quarter inch plywood that's fastened on to a frame of four by fours, which will be fastened on to the ground with uh, four four by four posts that are sunk three or four feet into the ground uh, depending on how deep I'm going to go and those will be anchored in with concrete that's quick setting concrete I bought most of the wood that I'm using at Home Depot recently and I've got some really old wood that's well seasoned and won't warp anymore that I'll be using and uh, for certain parts of the building and uh, uh, there'll be a like the um, the slit of the, it's going to be sort of like a dome-like structure and the slit will be approximately six feet wide, which is quite wide, maybe five feet to six feet, which is quite large for a small building like that, but that will allow a good, better seeing conditions because um, uh, the any warm air in the building uh, that's left over from the daytime heat will quickly rise out with a wide slit like that and the building will inside will reach thermal equilibrium very rapidly after it's opened up and uh, that way um, I'll have better seeing conditions and then the building will rotate uh, uh, the floor will be circular and the building will rotate uh, on uh, maybe five or six wheels just ordinary wheels that I can get from a hardware store uh, so that it can be aimed in any direction in azimuth and so if the wind for example is blowing from the north I can aim the opening of the building, like the slit, toward the south, and that way I'll have almost complete wind protection and uh, still a very wide open area where I can observe. And uh, if the wind is blowing from the west, uh, I can um, rotate the slit toward the east and I will get very good wind protection. And actually, even if the, I'm aiming south and the wind is blowing from the west, I should be able to get reasonably good wind protection. That's just my neighbor driving away. So uh, anyway, hopefully it will work out all right. Um, I'll tell, I want to tell, before I go any further, I'm just going to tell a very brief incident that actually happened at the Home Depot store when I was uh, uh, just looking around a couple, two or three weeks ago uh, to try and, uh, you know, just see what kind of wood I was going to use for this project. Um, I didn't actually buy anything that day, but I was like going through the store and I just happened to pass close to another customer who was loading a big stack of wood onto one of those large carts they have. And uh, uh, I stopped and just as I was walking by and took a very close look at the wood for about three or four seconds. I looked up at the customer and said, no termites. However, I am really old, so I could be wrong. So anyway, that's my joke of the day. Now I'll pick up the camera and show you what I did with the wood. Oh yes, also I should mention before I proceed any further that like the opening or the slit of the dome 
there'll probably be a single or a double door, probably a double door on the side of the, built, the cylinder that will open up and uh, that will be the slit, that, like part of the opening that faces uh, horizontally and it will open up in such a way that I'll be able to walk in the building like through that door as well as it as well as the door functioning as the opening for the telescope to look out of. And then for the dope opening in the top, I'll be using two wooden rails, like four by four posts, 10 feet long, that will s sort of act like, like similar to the function of a railroad track. And that will rotate, that will allow a part of the roof to slide backward along these rails. And that will be the opening, part of the opening on the top of the building that will allow me to look out and the, well, the roof will slide maybe about 12 inches or 16 inches past the zenith, maybe even two feet. And that will be allow me to aim the telescope directly overhead. And uh, one thing I have to remember when I'm constructing it is that I've already got a post set in the ground that I'll show you sometime in another video. And uh, I have to have the post off center a bit toward the south because the telescope mount itself is a fork mounting and it tends to protrude outward toward the north at approximately a 40, 45 degree angle. And it will be, it, the telescope itself is going to be offset from the pier, possibly by somewhere between 12 and 16 inches. So that means the post has to be, if the telescope is going to be centered in the building, it will have to be, ha, uh, the post will have to be offset toward the south by uh, whatever that amount is. Maybe eventually I'll put a C11 or even a C14 in the building, but I don't think I want to go into that just yet. One reason I'm making the building a little overly large, like nine, a little over nine feet, probably about nine feet three inches for the circular base diameter, is that um, in case I do like to want to upgrade to a larger telescope, I can do that with plenty of room in the building. Also, I'll probably have visitors in the building once in a while, and I want them to have room to walk around them inside without uh, too much problems. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is just take this camera and move it around and just show you how I stored the wood, and how they delivered it, and things like that. And just at the front end of my driveway. I'm doing this today because I think that eventually I'm going to, um, uh, like later today, put a large tarpaulin over this wood to keep it from getting uh, wet in the rain and stuff like that. So. Anyway, here goes. I'm just going to move the camera around a bit. I'm not too coherent today exactly because I just got up a few minutes ago. I'm half asleep. So anyway, uh, that that's my car there. That's a 19, in case you're wondering, that car is a 1984 Pontiac Parisian station wagon. It's sort of a classic car now in a way, like an antique. I'm, I really like the car. I'm keeping it going. So my neighbor fixed it up many years ago. He's a really ge a genius at fixing cars and he did some work on it. And it's a phenomenal uh, car to drive around in. <clears throat> this is the wood. Uh, all this stacked wood right here that you're seeing is uh, I drove home with it in my car. It can, that car can hold up to 10 foot long boards if I don't put too many in at a time. And uh, um, what you're seeing there is just the end of them and you could see how I clamped them together with very long clamps. I, di I didn't have quite enough uh, room under the clamps for both for the whole pile of wood so I made a second stack of four two by fours. These are pressure treated boards 10 feet long. Uh, the Home Depot allowed me to uh, pick them out myself so that um, uh, I got was able to pick them out very straight and I've got them clamped together like that, all in a stack, two different stacks actually, with, with uh, stuff under them to keep them off my driveway, like directly off it, like little boards underneath. And the reason I clamped them together like that was because uh, that, oh, as, they see, as they sort of uh, season over the next few months, uh, they'll tend not to warp, they'll tend to stay straight, which is what I want. And I'll show you the 4x4 four four pole straight down here. Okay, you can see the ends of the three ones right there at the bottom. Those are um, 10 feet long, pressure treated, and they're quite straight. They just warped a tiny little bit at most. So I'm hoping the clamping action will keep them from warping anymore. Two of those, I'm not sure which ones, whatever they're the straightest, are going to act as the rails. 
like a railroad track for the little opening on the, the roof to open up on just by rolling back. And then these others are going to be part of the probably part of the frame of the building. These are um, two by fours that are pressure treated and 10 feet long. And uh, you could sort of get an idea from that angle. Yeah, I'll hold the camera right about here and you could see the whole stretch of them as they go back sideways across my driveway. And uh, uh, you could see that uh, I have very powerful clamps that I've had for many years. I'll just move this camera upward a little bit, sort of pan it upward like that. The reason I have those plastic tips, like I just put, I got some scrap plastic just from packages of paper products or something in the house, and I put those over the tops of the clamps because part of the clamps at the top, the end of the bars, are very sharp, and um, I put a lot, use large elastic bands to put over the top of those bits of plastic. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so that um, when I put the tarpaulin over the whole thing later today uh, the uh, sharp ends of the metal will not uh, cut the uh, or damage the tarpaulin so anyway um, what I'm going to do now is show you how they ship the plywood I'm, I'm going to get up now from a crouching position okay so it's a, I'm a little difficult for me because I'm old Okay, what I'm going to do now is show you how they delivered the plywood. It's really a nice job that they did on it. They used a big truck with a fork to deliver it. And you could see the big sheets of plywood. There's 24 sheets of plywood there. Uh, six of them are three quarter inches thick. And there's six that are half inch thick. And there's 12 that are three eighths inch thick. And the three eighths ones are going to be for the walls of the building. And... Uh, I'll just pan it up a little bit like that and uh, lower the camera maybe a bit and uh, those two by fours are going to be part of the frame it's if you look if you know what an old-fashioned gazebo is like uh, that's what it's going to look like something like that I can actually take the camera back I think there's a little bit of time that by the way they're wrapped those things are wrapped in plastic as you can see and uh, which is very good that's the way they're delivered just stacked like that and, and wrapped in plastic like saran wrap all around them which is really good but what I did is yesterday to allow some ventilation I don't know whether you could see it or not in the video but I uh, I cut the a slit all, all the way around the bottom in sections uh, to allow the air to go into the package just so for some ventilation and I'll show you the tips of the, of the clamp clamp together there it is right there see how I covered that with plastic the one down at the bottom too I'll give you a look at that okay now uh, I've got a little bit of time left on the video before it hits the 15 minute time limit so what I'm gonna do is just take a quick walk through the passageway between my house and my garage just like this it'll just take about a second I'm gonna show you my gazebo and this will be the general shape of the observatory just like this, I'm walking into my backyard. There's my observatory that's open right now to the sky. You can see there, you've seen that before in other videos. And this is my gazebo right here. I'll step backwards. Yes, I don't have much time left before the 15 minutes expires, so... That's my gazebo right there. Pardon the appearance of everything. I'm going to be doing some work on my property, uh, painting it up and stuff like that. But this is the, that's the shape of the building. You can see it's an octagon, which would be somewhat similar to the shape of the observatory. And uh, that's basically the way it's going to be shaped. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, I've got a little bit of time left, I think, so I'll, I'll just uh, walk back. Let's hold this a little better. There it is. I'll just kind of walk by here. Just walking along through. You can see my shadow preceding me. There's another picture of the car and the uh, another picture of the car and the pile of wood right there, my driveway. So uh, I'll probably end off with that right about now.